head and neck, general tidbits, lymph node anatomic boundaries, level 1A, submental nodes, the lateral border is the anterior belly of the digastric muscle, the inferior border is the mid-hyoid, level 1B is your submandibular lymph nodes, the top or superior border is going to be the top of the submandibular gland, and the posterior border is going to be the posterior edge of the submandibular gland. The inferior border is the mid-hyoid. Again, level 1A, submental. Lateral border is the anterior belly of the digastric. Inferior border is the mid-hyoid. Level 1B is your submandibular. Superior border is the top of the submandibular gland. Inferior border is the mid-hyoid. Posterior border is the posterior edge of the submandibular gland. Level 2 is your uh, superior cervical nodes. It's broken up into level 2A and level 2B. Level 2A is anterior to the posterior edge of the internal jugular vein. 2B is posterior to the posterior edge of the internal jugular vein. Superior is either the transverse process of C1, if the node uh, zero neck, or the base of skull, including the retrostyloid space, if they're node positive. Inferior is once, once again, essentially at the hyoid, but at this case, it's the inferior edge of the hyoid. Posterior is the posterior edge of the sternocleidomastoid. The medial border is the internal carotid artery. The lateral border is defined by the sternocleidomastoid. The anterior is at the posterior edge of the submandibular gland and the anterior edge of the sternocleidomastoid. Level three is mid-cervical. The superior border is the inferior edge of the hyoid. And the inferior border of the level three lymph nodes is the inferior edge of the cricoid. Anteriorly, the anterior edge of the sternocleidomastoid and the others of the same borders as level two. Level four is in uh, inferior cervical nodes. The superior border is the inferior edge of the cricoid. The inferior border is two centimeters below the sternoclavicular joint, uh, low N0 or at the sternoclavicular joint if you have load no positive, and the others of the same border as three. Level five is the posterior triangle. Superior is the mid-hyoid, and inferior is the inferior level of the crossing vessels. Anterior border here is the posterior edge of the sternocleidomastoid, and posterior is the anterior edge of the trapezius. Level six is the central compartment. The superior border is the inferior edge of the thyroid cartilage. The inferior border is the medial SCM. The anterior border is the Skinner platysma, and the posterior border includes the C-shape inferior to the cricoid around the trachea, um, within the thyroid, and posteriorly towards the esophagus. The retropharyngeal space, or retropharyngeal nodes, uh, superior border is the base of skull, inferior border is the mid-hyoid, lateral is the ICA, posterior is the longus coli, and anterior is the posterior pharyngeal wall. Workup H&P, fibrosic fiber optic nasopharyngolaryngoscopy by manual exam to assess the floor of mouth, base of tongue, and submandibular gland, do a comprehensive lymph node exam. Labs, CBC, CMP, and TSH. OR evaluation, do an EUA with a biopsy of the oropharynx, larynx, or hypopharynx, or pan endoscopy for larynx or hypopharynx cancer. Imaging, you want CT with contrast of the neck and chest, and PET CT for any stage three or four. Other, you want a dental evaluation, audiology, nutrition, speech, and swallow. Indications for PEG-2 placement are severe weight loss prior to treatment, 5% in one month or 10% in six months, severe dysphagia, or high aspiration risk. Other things to look out for in terms of differential diagnoses, squamous cell cancer, melanoma, lymphoma, sarcoma, plasma cytoma, angioma, or other benign. In a review of the cranial nerves, one is the olfactory, two is optic, three is ocular motor, four is trochlear, which controls the superior oblique, five is trigeminal, six is abducens, the lateral rectus muscle, five is facial, sorry, six is abducens, seven is facial, which is the motor in the face, eight is vestibulocochlear, hearing and balance, nine is glossopharyngeal, which is oral sensation, taste, and salivation, 10 is the vagus, which is parasympathetic, 11 is the spinal accessory, which is the motor to the trapezius, and 12 is the hypoglossal, which is motor to the tongue. 
terms of neck management, there are uh, different types of neck dissections. The radical neck dissection removes levels 1 through 5, the sternocleidomastoid, the omohyoid, the internal and external jugular veins, and cranial nerve 11, which is the spinal accessory, as well as the submandibular gland. A modified radical neck dissection leaves greater than or equal to one of either the sternocleidomastoid, the internal jugular, or uh, cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory. A selected neck dissection leaves greater than or equal to one lymph node level. Supraomohyoid dissection removes levels 1 through 3. And lateral neck dissection removes levels 2 through 4. The new classification of neck dissection per NCCN, a comprehensive removes all lymph node groups 1 through 5 for node positive disease. And selective neck dissection is site specific depending on the lymph nodes at risk. Neck dissection for an N0 is selective. For an oral cavity, you generally want to dissect levels 1 through 3, plus or minus the upper portion of level 4. For a pharynx cancer, such as oropharynx, hypopharynx, um, or a larynx cancer, you generally dissect levels 2 through 4, maybe level 6 for subglottic cancers. Uh, N1 or N2, you can do a selective or comprehensive neck dissection, and N3 gets a compre comprehensive neck dissection. Uh, radiation coverage of a, a node negative neck, meaning elective radiation coverage for the nasopharynx, levels 2 through 5, and retropharyngeal nodes. For an oral cavity, bilaterals uh, 1B through 3 in the top of level 4. Uh, you include 1A for lip, oral tongue, inferior alveolar ridge or floor of mouth, ipsilateral only for well lateralized T1 to T2, N0, or T1, N1. Oropharynx gets bilateral levels 2 through 4, ipsilateral uh, for well lateralized tonsil, ipsilateral retropharyngeal, bilateral of posterior pharyngeal wall is involved. Larynx gets bilaterals 2 through 4. Level 6 as well, if the thyroid cartilage, posterior cricoid cartilage, or the subglottis is involved. Supraglottis gets levels 2 through 4 bilaterally. Hypopharynx gets bilaterals 2 through 4 and retropharyngeal, and 6 if the thyroid cartilage, posterior cricoid cartilage, or subglottic invasion. The only lesions that drain directly to level 5 are the nasopharynx and the scalp. In terms of management, T1 to T2 tumors get surgery or radiation alone. T3 or node positive get a combination of chemo radiation. Chemo concurrent uh, chemotherapy is generally cisplatin, 100 milligrams per meter squared every three weeks, or if they can't tolerate cisplatin, you can use cetuximab. 400 milligrams per meter squared loading. Uh, this is done the week before radiation, and then 250 milligrams per meter squared weekly. The Bonner trial showed that this had improved overall survival. Um, your third choice would be giving carbotaxel weekly, and you would give three cycles. The role for induction chemotherapy is generally only for bulky disease, so uh, T4B or N3, impending airway issues or unresectable disease, a high risk for uh, metastatic disease, or a delay to the start of radiation. Neck management, the ipsilateral neck should be addressed. If you're treating with radiation alone, you treat the primary and the neck. The only exception is some parotid and skin cancers. If uh, you're doing surgery, do an ipsilateral neck dissection. The indications for contralateral neck dissection are gross uh, lymph node involvement or a midline structure. Generally, you treat bilateral necks with radiation. Uh, see radiation coverage of the node negative neck here. You can treat an ipsilateral neck with radiation for well lateralized T bars, which is tonsil, buccal, uh, mucosa, alveolar ridge, retromolar trigone, and salivary. Adjuvant treatment after surgery, post op radiation indications include PT3 or T4, perineural invasion, LVI, so lymphovascular invasion, multiple lymph nodes that are positive, close margins, or an oral cavity primary with levels 4 and 5 lymph nodes. Post-op indications for chemo radiation would be extra capsular extension and positive margins. Uh, you would want to get a PET CT 12 weeks after definitive chemo radiation. If there's residual disease clinically or radiographically or uh, the patient was initially N3, then you consider a neck dissection at that time. The total package time should be less than 11 weeks from the start of radiation, uh, six weeks after surgery. In terms of evidence, uh, evidence for radiation alone, altered fractionation. First trials, RTOG 9003, FU, Beitler, um, the Red Journal 2014. 
This looked at stage three to four squamous cell cancers and stage two for base of tongue and hypopharynx. They were treated with radiation alone uh, in four arms. The first was standard fractionation, 70 gray, 35 fractions, two gray per fraction. The second arm was hyperfractionation, 81.6 gray and 68 fractions, 1.2 gray BID. The third arm was accelerated split course, 67.2 gray at 1.6 gray BID with a two week break halfway through. And then the last arm was accelerated fractionation with a concomitant boost. 54 gray and 30 fractions with BID 1.5 gray uh, for the last 12 fractions. So essentially 54 gray plus 18 gray equals 72 gray total. Initially, um, the hyperfractionated arm, this arm here, 81.6 and 68 fractions, and the accelerated uh, split course, which is the second arm here, accelerated split course, 67.2 at 1.6 BID had better local regional control, but only the actual hyperfractionated arm had improved five-year local control um, on longer follow-up, 51% uh, versus 45%. Increase in acute toxicity, but it has the same late toxicity. The next trials looking at radiation alone are Dahanka 6, which was glottic uh, radiation only, and Dahanka 7, which is looking at radiation plus nemorazole for supraglottic pharynx and oral cavity cancers. They were treated to 62 to 68 gray at 2 gray per fraction, um, either 5 or 6 fractions a week. Most of these were early stage T1 to T2, N0. The results, there was an increase in disease-free survival and tumor control with 6 fractions a week. 5-year local control was 70% with 6 fractions versus 60% for 5 fractions, so a 10% increase in 5-year local control. There's no difference in nodal control or overall survival, and there was an increase in acute toxicity associated with um, doing six fractions a week. The role of post-op radiation is defined by Peters and Ang. Um, this is looking at resected oral cavity, oropharynx, larynx, and hypopharynx. Um, indications for post-op radiation include oral cavity primary site, the presence of perineural invasion, close margins, multiple nodes, or lymph node greater than three centimeters. Post-op chemo radiation um, is indicated for positive extracapsular extension or positive margins um, in cases of resected oral cavity, oropharynx, larynx, and hypopharynx cancer. Breaking this down, the EORTC or Bernier analysis also had positive perineural invasion, stage three to four, oral cavity or oropharynx with uh, levels four or five involved, doing post-op chemo radiation improved overall survival for these patients. RTOG Cooper also showed um, greater than or equal to two nodes benefited from post-op chemo radiation. This increased local control and disease-free survival, but not overall survival. So when you combined, results show that chemo RT improved overall survival, disease-free survival, local regional control for ECE or positive margins, 40% versus 50%. Looking at definitive chemo radiation, um, the first trial is Cleveland Clinic Adelstein, had three arms, radiation versus chemo radiation versus split course chemo radiation. Uh, three year overall survival was 23% for just radiation alone, 37% for chemo radiation and 27% for split course. The mock NC meta-analysis or pinyon meta-analysis, concurrent monoagent platinum, in Improved five-year overall survival uh, by 8% um, to concurrent, and then five-year, 5% uh, 5 overall survival to chemo plus RT. In-service says 6.5% five-year overall survival and 3.4% in 10-year overall survival with concurrent chemo radiation. The Bonner trial um, is looking at the role of radiation plus or minus cetuximab. This was 400 milligrams loading dose of cetuximab. Um, then 250 milligrams weekly for stage three to four non-metastatic oropharynx, hypopharynx, or larynx cancers. Uh, the radiation was either conventional 70 gray, hyperfractionation 72 gray BID, or concomitant boost 72 gray and 24 fractions. Five-year overall survival was improved 36% versus 46% with the inclusion of cetuximab. This was only seen for the BID or concomitant boost arms. Other trials to look at would be the TATA analysis here. This is uh, every three weeks is platin, 
um, is better than weekly cisplatin for local regional control. RTOG 1016, locally advanced P16 oropharynx, either cetuximab or cisplatin, um, both with radiation. The cetuximab is inferior overall survival of 78% versus 85% and progression-free survival 67% versus 78%. Same toxicity profiles between the two. Radiation technique, IMRT. There's randomized data for oropharynx, paranasal sinus, and nasopharynx. Evolving for oral cavity, larynx, hypopharynx, salivary gland. PAR support included hypopharynx. You worry about infield recurrences and low-grade mucositis in oral cavity, posterior hair loss. Remember, uh, if you're treating the ipsilateral neck, only not to have any beams entering through the contralateral side. With comprehensive IMRT, keep the larynx mean less than 20 gray. In terms of techniques and planning, uh, we'll do SAM supine with aquaplast mask, neck hyperextended and shoulders down, thin cut two to three millimeters CT with IV contrast. In the definitive setting, get a PET CT SIM or fuse, isocenter anterior to C2 if you're treating the bilateral neck. Setup should be daily KV with weekly cone beam CT. If you're doing definitive chemo radiation or radiation alone for stage one to two, comprehensive IMRT with dose painting. The dose is in 35 fractions, either 70 uh, for high dose, 70 gray in 35 fractions, uh, 63 gray in 35 fractions for mid dose, and 56 um, for your low risk in 35 fractions. The volumes here, CTV 70 is the gross primary plus 5 millimeters and the gross notes plus 5 millimeters. Your CTV 63 is your gross primary plus 1 centimeter and your high-risk nodes, which are your first echelon nodes. Your CTV56 are your low-risk nodes, the second echelon and contralateral first echelon if they're not involved. And then your PTV is a three to five millimeter expansion. That's for definitive. For post-op radiation, the dose is different. Um, we're talking about fewer fractions, 30 fractions, either 60 gray and 30 fractions or 54 gray and 30 fractions. This is done for ECE or positive margins. Uh, to 66 gray. Um, this would be the indication for chemo as well. So the volume CTV66 is the area of positive margin or ECE plus one centimeter. CTV60 would be pre-op GTV and tumor bed plus 1.5 centimeters and your high risk nodes. CTV54 would be your low risk nodes, the second echelon and contralateral if indicated, and then the PTV is a three to five millimeter expansion on the CTV. Radiation alone for stage one to four, you would treat with six fractions as per Dehanka or March uh, head and neck meta-analysis. Other options would be hyperfractionation, 81.6 and 68 gray, 1.2 BID like the RTOG 9003. You could do a concomitant boost, 54 gray, 1.8, then boost as BID treatment for 18 gray and 1.5 gray for the last 12 days, as in the accelerated fraction with concomitant boost. Um, Palliative quad shot is 3.7 gray BID with a six hour interval times two days. Then can, you can repeat up to three cycles. Each cycle is three weeks apart. Constraints and toxicity plan eval, 95% of the PTV getting 100% of the dose, 99% of the PTV getting 93% of the dose, hot spots less than 115. PRVs, your cord plus five millimeters should get a max of 50. Your brain stem plus one millimeter, V60 less than 1%. Your optic chiasm nerve plus one millimeter should be less than 54 gray. Your brain stem max is 54 gray. Your cord max is 45 gray. Your mandible minus the PTV should be a max of 70. Your oral cavity should be a mean of 30 or less than 30. Brachial plexus, D max less than 66. Your pharyngeal constrictor mean less than or equal to 50 gray, and your constrictors minus your PTV should get less than or equal to 40 gray. Your larynx minus your PTV mean should be less than or equal to 20 gray, mean less than 45 gray. Submandibular gland, less than 40 gray. Parotid mean less than 26 gray, or alara if the neck is involved. Unilateral parotid V30 less than 50%, and mean less than 15 gray. 39 gray to bilateral parotid is associated with uh, less than 50%, um, or sorry, 39 gray to bilateral parotid less than 50% with 
risk of salivary dysfunction is less than 25%. For nasal cavity or nasopharynx, the optic chiasm or nerve max is 54. Pituitary mean dose should be less than 40. Retina should be less than 45 gray, but the lens is less than 7 gray. Cochlea mean is less than 30 gray, and temporal lobe bilateral max should be less than 60. Follow-up, history and physical at one month, three months, and then every three months for the first two years, every four months through year three, every six months through year five, then annually. Follow-up imaging should consist of uh, within six months of treatment, you want a PET CT at 12 weeks if definitive, and then as indicated, thyroid eval, TSH every six to 12 months, 25% of patients develop hypothyroidism, get a carotid evaluation, dental evaluation, speech and swallow as needed, and audiology. 90% of recurrences occur within the first three years after treatment.